Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Daily Dizzle for Friday, February 11th, 2011. It's Tommy Dizzlemitz here, as always, and today we've got a look at the weekend box office. Uh, business is coming off of unusually low levels. Unfortunately, the start of this year didn't have any huge holiday holdover like Avatar last year, which did over two-thirds of its business in the calendar year of 2010, despite being a movie released at the tail end of 2009. Uh, so business has been at a 20-year low for the month of January. Super Bowl weekend was estimated to be at a 15-year low. Ended up hitting 16-year low. So uh, every year counts uh, just to show that people aren't going to the movies as much. I mean, you can make up the fact that, oh, well, ticket prices are more expensive, blah, blah, blah. It, it doesn't explain the audience not coming out unless it's the fact that, I don't know, maybe there's just shitty movies out. This weekend, though, because it is Valentine's weekend, um, with the holiday on Monday, it, it will act as a like an extra weekend day. That's how uh, the Monday holidays sometimes do. They don't really uh, hit the levels of like the Friday or Saturday where everyone's off and just looking for time to kill. However, it will be a bigger day than a normal weekday would gross, especially a Monday, which is typically one of the lowest levels because everyone is miserable about the week and is just not thinking of going to the movies. Not the case this year as Valentine's Day falls on the Monday. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of new releases uh, looking to hopefully bounce business back. Um, of course, around Valentine's Day, every so often, you've got an Adam Sandler movie coming out. Uh, you've got Just Go With It this year, him and Jennifer Aniston, where he pretends to have a family to get this chick that he wants. Uh, it might do about his typical business, which, at the very least, people say, oh, his business doesn't grow with each movie. Considering some of the shit he puts out, like You Don't Mess With The Zohan, which got some of the worst reviews ever, the fact that he can still be a consistent draw is something of a phenomenon. So, uh, if you look at his uh, Valentine's Day track record, though, uh, with such movies, you now it's like 50 First Dates, which ended up breaking the Valentine's Day in February weekend record at the time. It was a huge milestone, uh, and it kind of is showing that they're trying to follow the same pattern. Uh, they might not have as great of a hook as that time. You know, you had Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore reuniting for the first time since The Wedding Singer, which had been regarded as a kind of a classic since it came out and it got you know made money when it came out, but just didn't have a huge reception. But now you see it on TV all the time, so I don't know if this is necessarily going to hold up with this movie, but you can expect it to at least perform around regular Adam Sandler levels, and even if it does that, it might make a strong showing for the number one spot. However, you do have some other uh, outside factors, like Justin Bieber. Yes, the Justin Bieber movie. I bet we're all excited about that one. But unfortunately, there will be a lot of kids who are excited about that, and the fact that it also is in 3D. You got to look at like Hannah Montana uh, for comparison records, which you know broke like the the concert genre uh, record for a movie opening, and then in the long run. Uh, so even though Justin Bieber sucks, it's probably going to happen because there's going to be a lot of kids out there and a lot of families who are going to pay to see Justin Bieber in all his 3D glory. Uh, meanwhile, you also have another 3D movie at one of the rare occasions. I think this is only the second time where you've had competing 3D movies opening on the same weekend. Uh, before, you barely had 3D screens. Now you have enough that you can release two movies at the same time. Uh, it's another kid movie, though, Nomeo and Juliet, you know, kind of going for anyone who also needs to go to the movies but knows that they don't want to be stuck seeing Justin Bieber with their screaming little kids. Uh, that might be the hook for them because everyone knows Romeo and Juliet and the talking gnomes shit, you know, even though it's a page out of the Toy Story book, it, it still is entertaining. So, at the very least, it could put a dent in the family audience that Justin Bieber might draw in, or it could just hit the other quadrants, really, because the Justin Bieber uh, demographic, as vocal as it is, I don't think it's going to be a huge movie. So anyone who thinks that it might make like $100 million, I, I hope you're dreaming. And if you aren't, then I might have to kill myself. Uh, but on top of all that, there's also a, an unknown factor, though it might not be much of a factor at the end of the weekend. You have The Eagle. Uh, it's Channing Tatum's latest movie. It, it's kind of one of those period piece set, you know, in the olden days. Uh, you've got extravagant costumes and awesome, like, old school, like, Roman battles and shit like that, or whatever it is. Uh, but at the same time, those kind of movies do well once they're on TV and people are like, oh, did you ever see that movie? It, it's a good one. They don't really tend to perform that well at the box office. But due to the fact that it is Valentine's weekend and Channing Tatum does have a female fan base um, that ended up propelling Dear John to number one around the same time last year, uh, anything is possible. Uh, however, what might not be possible is for this weekend to actually recover compared to last year. 
Um, looking at the numbers from last year's weekend, you had a bunch of really big openings. You had Valentine's Day, which even though that kind of dropped off fast, it still managed to make half of its over $100 million haul in just the three-day weekend. So on top of that, you also had the Wolfman, which even though it wasn't as good as the classic Wolfman, it still made a little bit of money and even got an Oscar nom for special effects. I don't know how that happens, especially when I heard that the special effects were some of the worst things about it. But we'll let the Academy handle the explanation on that one, if they'll ever give one. Uh, you also had Percy Jackson and the Olympians, which was trying to start like a new Harry Potter franchise. So even though the weekend does stand a shot at at least being one of the first bounce back weekends uh, compared to last year, not necessarily as likely, only for the fact that last year's holiday holdovers like Avatar uh, it just were a phenomenal. Plus, you had Sherlock Holmes and even Alvin and the Chipmunks. You know, there were just a lot of things going on. On top of that, you actually had some appealing movies from January. This year, the slate has not held up as well. And you do have the holiday movies still holding in there on top of the Oscar-nominated movies, which are starting to build their audiences. But that's still not going to be enough, I think, in the long run. So even though business might be rosier this weekend, you can still expect a down weekend compared to last year. Uh, so that's the box office analysis for today, and that's all the time we've got for the Daily Dizzle. We do thank you guys for joining us here as always. We are here Monday through Friday. Uh, we do a weekend update by Sunday, but this weekend to make up for some lost time, you can expect one on Saturday as well. So thank you guys for joining us as always. We'll have the latest up-to-date numbers, estimates for uh, Friday night as soon as they are in on the next Daily Dizzle. So until next time, I'm Tommy Dizzlemitz. We will see you then.